I just want to say that that is a beautiful song. And, Tim's, you fine as fuck. And I want to beat you. Thank you. Um. Okay, what's up, y'all? It's your girl, Taylor Wayla. Woohoo! Oh, no. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. But how are you guys doing? It's been a while, but we're here, we're here, we're here. Oh, is my mic tripping? Okay. We're here. We're live. It's Friday. It's Friday. It's Friday. It's the end of the week and the last day. Uh-huh. Y'all know nothing about that. But I hope that you're doing great and that you're, you know, walking in your purpose and stuff for real, for real. I mean that. So, yeah, y'all. I'm just chilling. I didn't have to go to work today because my son's not feeling good. And I'm a daycare teacher. So, yeah, y'all, I am sipping on some strawberry daiquiri dailies. I am in a space, like, mentally where I feel like I am progressing. So I'm constantly in, like, a place of transitioning and all this other kind of stuff. If that makes sense, that's where I feel like I'm at right now. So, like I said, I'm a daycare teacher now. I just started this job, like, this is going on about a month and a half. About a month. So, and I teach one-year-olds, which is is cool. And I say that, like, I really enjoy my class, for real, for real. In the beginning, it was panic. And I was like, oh, my gosh, but... They thought they was going to run me up out of there, but I stood my ground, and now we do Baby Shark together. So, I'm enjoying it. I feel like I'm there for a reason right now, and I've been getting a lot of confirmations in that um, on a spiritual level. So, and I feel like those type of things just, like I said, confirming that I'm on the right path, like, because that's all... That's what I want right now, and just to have peace and to be happy. For real. So, but we're not going, that's just where I'm at. I was just letting you know, because I asked you, you know, I was hoping that somebody asked me how I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? How are you, Taylor? Oh, That's crazy to say right now, but I'm doing good. Y'all, I'm looking at my Spotify playlist right now. And I got some ones on there. Like, I, my nephew think that my playlist is popping. You know, all of my all of my car goers, they enjoy the tunes that I have in the car. But I think I need to spice it up because I'm looking. Okay, I got this one song on here, and I'm going to play it at the end of the pod because I'm like, I think that's the one. Um. It's called Carita de Inocente. Okay. Here we go with the Spanish. I, Spanglish? What? It, come on. Um, but it's by Prince Royce featuring Mike Towers. That's the remix version that I like. I discovered that song from 
and eight fitness on YouTube because I enjoy doing dance cardio and they got like really good dance cardio videos. They're twin sisters. I think they're twins. They look exactly alike. But yeah. They got um a good playlist of music too. But they be pl- and they are very passionate about what they do because they still play the full versions of the songs. So they can't get monetized from their videos that, you know, but they still be putting them out consistently. And I appreciate that because it's helping me lose weight and get right. You know, I was like, the summer is approaching. Okay. And I've been seeing like, um, stuff on the socials about this is the summer vibe, ba da da. And this is the summer vibe. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, um, you know, we're improving all that. Yeah, I did definitely bring that down. I'm glad because, you know, these people be calling my phone. I'm like, who are you? I don't know. No number that start with the letter V. I know no number like that. So why are you calling me? They be selling our stuff, bro. And then I'm like, "Hmm." I guess I did click the accept button on that. I did sign off on that. So, but anyways. It's one twenty-seven in the afternoon. And, yeah. Y'all, okay, so this morning, I really got up with the intentions this morning that I was going to go to work. Even though my baby wasn't feeling good last night, because he's been doing this thing where it's like he got a fever at night and in the afternoon, but in the daytime, in the morning, he don't have no fever. Like, I checked, this has been day two now, and his fever is gone. Like, in the, at night, he got a fever. But also, I think that he's been having night hair. I'm talking about my two-year-old son, Abraham. Um, But I think he's been having night terrors because he's been waking up at, in the middle of the night, right, Asking for chips and stuff that come for him. He like food and he like juice. You know, he like food and juice, like regular toddlers. And, you know, specific people. So he be wanting those things and he wake up crying for it. And um, the last time he did it, I wasn't in. He had fell asleep in his bed in the other room. So I had the baby monitor on and I heard him and he was like, it was like a progressive, like a crescendo, if you might, of him having one of those episodes. So I was like, okay, I went in there to go comfort him and stuff like that. Because I'm like, okay, he's having a night terror. He's still asleep doing all the all of this. So it lasted about like 20, 30 minutes. And I felt bad because my baby, not my baby, he is a big boy. And I am treating him as such nowadays because since I've started this job, I have seen um, the spectrum of children as far as, like, behavior goes. And how that correlates to adults and as far as my experience, he ain't, I can't. And I'm going to start disciplining him Um more firmly and on a more consistent basis because I and I definitely talk to Abraham Abraham and I we especially now we have conversations so I explain to him no don't do this because da 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 you know but that's just children they and I understand that. That's why I have so much patience. And I think I had too much patience. That's why he, y'all, okay, my last straw, <laughs> let me say, my last straw parenting-wise was when we was at the Dollar Tree getting school supplies and stuff for my classroom. And I had Lyric out the car seat, so I'm holding Lyric in one of my arms and holding Abraham in the other. And they got buggies in there. Okay, I said Abraham getting a buggy. 
So I let them get in the buggy. But I didn't notice that they had the little pole security thing. So you can't take the buggy out the store. I did not notice that when I walked in. So we're shopping. We're shopping. I'm letting Abraham get stuff that he wants that I should, you know, I should not be doing it. But I let him get a couple things that he wants. So we check out and everything. And, y'all, he was very adamant about the buggy the whole time going there. I promise you, he was so adamant about buggies that day. So it's time to leave the store. <laughs> I still got Lyric in my arm and Lyric sleep. I got I got to get Abraham out the seat of the stroller of the um, buggy. He's refusing, y'all. <laughs> I have a five month old in my arms trying to get a two year old that's like almost he's probably forty pounds now, about there. Um out of a buggy. And he was so mad about it, y'all. He really <laughs> it took about I, it it felt like 30 minutes, but it took probably about like 10 minutes to get out the store. And, yo, the parking, I just, that was just my last straw. That was my last straw because he showed his tail. But he showed his tail because I allowed him to show his tail at home. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I used to let him, you know what I'm saying, just... Not necessarily do what he want to do, but I let him express himself. I'm really into that. Like, I want my child, both of my children, but especially Abraham, since he's a boy and he will be a man one day. I want him to know that he can express himself. Shout out to all the black men, um, men in general, but shout out to my black men this month because it's Men's Mental Health Month in the month of June, okay? I'm so for that. Like, I want him to know that he can express himself. But in the right ways, though, for him. In the right ways in general. Like, there's a way to do things. You don't have to. If you're upset about getting out the buggy, that's fine. You can express that. But you're not about to sit up here and have a whole temper tantrum and all this other type of stuff in public. I just felt so embarrassed, y'all. I was so embarrassed. Oh, my God. I just felt like on that day, I feel like it a lot. I feel like it in general. But on that day specifically, I felt like I looked like a walking stereotype. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? (laughs) And then my kids in my classroom, I, I was like, this is like two, three weeks in or whatever. And my co-teacher wasn't there because, you know what I'm saying, she got in an accident. So I was holding down eight toddlers. Eight, they're not even toddlers, they're one. They're one year olds. Eight one year olds. For damn near ten hours a day. y'all okay i just had to i had to let that go (laughs) but do you feel me though like damn okay but we're here i'm grateful i went through all of that because it let me see the things i need to improve on in my parenting because i feel like i'm you know i'm pretty i'm a pretty cool parent and i'm a good mom like I'm an exceptional mom you know but there are areas that I can improve on as is you know what I'm saying as anybody else should because ain't nobody perfect Hmm. sorry and that's something that I'm learning as well like I'm learning that I'm such a perfectionist like in all aspects of my life and I didn't understand like how like impactful it was for real for real for real until recently like I really am a perfectionist and I want to have like control so I can know 
okay, this is going to go, you know, how I think it's going to go because I'm doing it, you know. And if it don't, then I know why because I was, you know what I'm saying? But I don't. So, um, hmm. Yeah, so I'm going to therapy soon. Um, 16 minutes in. I'm not trying to, this is not how everything's going to go. But this is my shit, though. So if I want to get on here and fucking vent, then I'm going to get on here and motherfucking vent, nigga, because I ain't got no therapist right now. And I feel like I ain't got nobody I can really vent to like this right now. So, yeah, you don't have to listen, but whatever. Um, I am going to therapy soon. The therapist that I'm going to, though, is referral, and it's only going to be two sessions for now. If I like, you know, how everything is going. If not, if so, then we're going to have to set up something because I need to see somebody weekly. <laughs> no cap. <laughs> no cap, I promise you. That is what I found over the course of my life. That's what works best for me to see somebody regularly. I am the best, I'm at my best functional, you know, tailor. <laughs> when I'm seeing a therapist that I have a, you know, a good um, relationship with regularly. So, and preferably somebody black, like, I've had, I've had, da, 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 da. I can say I've had two black female therapists, three, three, shout out to me. Um, and Miss Ponder, I think that was her name, Miss Ponder. Her ass was fat as fuck. Oh my God. <laughs> but that, like, she really was my counselor. And I needed her during those times. So shout out to her. So, um, yeah. Go get some therapy, guys. Or start a podcast. Oh, my gosh. Shout out to listen to this Why You Shit podcast. And, yes, I'm glazing. I don't give a fuck. I glaze good. All right? It's got honey on it. What the fuck is you talking about? But shout out to them because that's Dom's quote. He says, men don't start, men don't go to therapy. We start podcasts, end quote. So, yeah. This shit is really hitting for real. Okay, so we go into, okay, my best friends and I and their friend group are going to um Myrtle Beach soon and I've gotten into drinking lately like for real, for real not like okay I ain't gonna say I have been having like a little drink I don't never be finishing my drinks though like when I get off work I be having like a little drink but I don't never really finish it I go to sleep <laughs> I go to sleep I'll be asleep by 9 30 10 o'clock but we go into Myrtle Beach and I'm sipping on this thing I'm trying to find the percentage because my BFF she like Taylor Port it's got five percent then it's got five I am a light I guess I don't know I'm not drunk or nothing but you know it's going It's got five percent in it, and I think we need to bring a couple of these. They was two for five. I remember at one point in time they was three for five though, or something like that. It was a lot you could get for like five dollars or something. Now it's two for five at Publix. Maybe I just need to stop shopping at Publix. Where do y'all be shopping? Please let me know. I there's all these up the street, but the thing about all these, right, or just shopping in general is when you you just have to hit it at a certain time cuz i have <laughs> fucking anxiety like 
I cannot do large crowds right now. Like, for real, for real. We went to, um, we tried to go to the splash park twice last weekend. Lines was too long. I was like, nope. The first time, we didn't even get out of the car. <laughs> we just pulled up. <laughs> we just pulled up. <laughs> I looked. <laughs> I looked. And we right on through. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I felt bad, though. I really did feel bad because I told the kids we was going to go. But I just could not see myself going that first day. The second day, I just really didn't feel like waiting in that line. It wasn't even super. It was long. We probably was going to be in it for about another hour. And, you know, I wasn't down for that. We was on time crunch. But one day, we shall go to Splash at the park. And now, like I said, I've been doing a lot of transitioning and just bettering of self. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what you should be doing instead of worrying about these niggas. I'm talking to me, too. Because, God damn. God damn. <laughs> um, I am working on really honoring my own commitment. That I make because I'm the only one that be saying, I'm gonna do this, that, and blah, 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 blah. Don't nobody really be most of the time making me say nothing I feel or like pressuring me to say, you know, to commit to something. But in, even in general, I still, even in that sense, I still have the choice of saying whatever and making commitments. So, excuse me, and improving upon it daily. Because I hurt my baby feelings. My son was so upset that we didn't get to go on the water slide. He was ready. <laughs> he was so ready. And I was just like, I can't even be upset that you're going off right now. Because, yeah, I just was not. I couldn't. So we got in the kiddie pool instead at the crib. He didn't want to get in the water anymore. So, how has y'all's dating life been? Because <laughs> mine, okay, I can't say it's been uneventful, but it's not, like, exciting. Ooh, it's not good. <laughs> it's not giving none of that. <laughs> like, it's, um, it's okay. Like, I really felt, not as much nowadays, but I did feel like I was in my promiscuous whole phase for a minute, like a couple months. And I, I wasn't doing that. Like, I wasn't sleeping around with everybody, nothing like that. Like, nothing like that. But I felt like just having multiple people, you know, on my line and possibly two. You know what I'm saying? But... I don't know. Now, now I feel like, okay, that's, mm -mm. it's not really, <laughs> it's not really um as fun when you, when you don't really know what you're doing. It's like just shooting, just pow, 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 pow at the half court line. And I'm five, three and a half. And that's <laughs> that is how the game is going for me, okay? And now I've made some shots now. Don't play. Don't play. And they been what? Splash, okay? Nothing but draws. Period, okay? But, no. It's been kind of, like, inconsistent. And I feel like maybe it's just because I'm in Atlanta. Is that what's going on? Because, or is it like, I'm also in a, like, I need to be in a better position. Let's say, ooh, that's what I wanted to come on here and say. Thank you, God. Because that's, let's bring it back, bring it back. Okay. I need to better myself. 
as well so that I can be in the position to, you know what I'm saying, um, have the type of man that I want. And I say that meaning taking care of myself. I'm going I'm to use my cousin as an example. Shout out to Monty. What's up, Monty? I love you, Monty. But Monty um, was talking about how, oh, dang. <laughs> never mind, never mind. But she put me on to something. Basically saying, just take care of yourself and go outside and whatever. You know what I'm saying? You never know. You never know. <laughs> Uh, yeah so um that's what's up I'm gonna be doing that so I'm taking trips I'm going to Philly I'm going to Dom's live show whenever um I get paid again I don't know guys when I get paid next I need to put my deposit down for this Myrtle Beach trip and put some away for the Philly trip and then pay for the Philly trip the next time I get paid. For sure. Because I don't want to, first of all, the bills got to be paid, all this other kind of stuff. You know, like, I got stuff to pay for. Gas is what? Y'all, let me tell you something. If gas gets to $5, bitch, we might get a horse. <laughs> what is going on? I have a Kia. I should not be paying. I should not be paying fifty five dollars to fill up my car. I have a Kia. Get out of here. I ride that shit on Eco all day. There's no reason for that. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Am I the only one that think I'm funny? I'll be thinking that sometimes. <laughs> I promise you. I feel like I could do stand up possibly Mm, that might be a stretch but maybe like just like podcasting like this like I could see myself having a talk show I did see that when I was younger I I could see myself having a talk show and it being like comedic to some sort you know I think I'm funny but and that's all that matter fuck you Period. That's the energy for the rest of this motherfucking year and the rest of my motherfucking time, bitch. I am living my life for me. I'm living my life for me because if I live my life for me and I take care of myself and I keep God, you know, and the most high first, you know, and then me, then everything else will flow. Everything else will flow because the path has already been set. I just have to walk. At least for me. So my best friend says she want to wear, she want us to wear milk. (laughs) She says she want us to wear milk white for her birthday dinner. And I laughed because she posted a, a, a gif, not a gif, because I used to call them gifs. But she posted a gif on in the group chat, and it was funny. But I don't know where to necessarily get it from. Shout out to my girl Tati, Tatiana Hudson, on Instagram and TikTok. She um got some really cute stuff off Amazon and I'm about to go and look y'all yeah, was going somewhere I did really have something I wanted to talk about for real um women I wanted to talk about first last little funny bit this fucking Juneteenth pro black edition products that these big companies are marketing is insane and it's not giving what they thought it was giving and I don't like it I walked in Walmart earlier this morning it was 9 20 in the morning they getting everything fully stocked I saw I don't I can't say I saw a formula but I saw a lot of stuff in the baby 
section fully stocked. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, okay, they doing their, you know what I'm saying? They're doing their thing. So we was in there to get my son some Hot Wheels. You know what I'm saying? So we passed by this little display of <laughs> fucking Crayola crayons. My son looked at them because he was looking at all the prices and stuff. And the box of crayons had, like, black kids on them and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, okay. But the colors was, like, it was shades of melanin, but it was browns and pinks. Like, bro, what is the difference between the browns and pinks in this one Versus the big one that you get in the 64. And if there is a difference, why don't you put those in the big, like, come on. You make all the colors. Why do you have to market for this specific time these colors when you could do this any other time? You make all the fucking colors. Crayola. I did not like that shit. Like, I can see, like, the kids, you know what I'm saying? My toddlers can't do crayons because they eat those. But I can see other kids playing, you know, and drawing, um, coloring. Jeez, coloring little black kids and stuff like that. Because you do have to blend them and stuff with the other crayons, like the regular ones. But I can see that. But you could, you know what I'm saying? You could put those out any time of the year. I just don't like that. I don't like that at all. And they didn't let nobody get off, like, on this on that holiday, quote, unquote. Get out. It's another one of the capitalistic schemes. You just want me to spend my money when you know I don't have that shit because rent is outrageous. It's just too expensive to be alive. <laughs> it's too expensive to be alive in Atlanta, in Georgia, or anywhere else. Like, and you want me to pay $16 for a 64-pack of browns and pinks? That, okay, I'm saying it now. I'm not really hating for real, for real, because I really don't like the idea of it. But I do like the assortments. Like, I didn't look inside, but I do like the ideas of, you know, the different shades. But, bitch, put that out at any time. Fuck. And give me my motherfucking reparations. Give me my motherfucking money. Matter of fact, burn this shit down. Tear this shit down. Start the fuck over. And then give me shit. Don't even give me shit. Let's just all start equal. All right, there you go. I also wanted to come on here and say that Females are delusional. I say that because I am a female and I am delusional. I have, like I said, I like to have control of things. Not saying that I am actively, not saying that I'm not trying to improve on these things. But I have a history of wanting to have control over a situation. Um... And kind of like maybe that turning it sour. Maybe that's the reason it turned sour with a guy, like as far as relationships go. But yeah, I'm saying that because I could have prevented a lot of things had I not been like digmatized or motherfucking just been thinking and seeing for what it is. You know what I'm saying? Not for what I wanted, not for what I wanted it to be, you know? I think that the narrative of, like, independent, like, whatever is going on the City Girl, all this other type of shit, I think it's getting played out now, and it's or at least publicly getting played out now. But I don't like that. I don't like the, um, first of all, I just said it's too expensive to be alive. It's too expensive to have water, nigga. So... I am looking to have somebody to live with. I need a man, nigga. What are you talking about? I need somebody with a different reproductive organ than me who is financially stable. That's that part of the narrative. 
is correct. That's for anybody. You know what I'm saying? Because at this big age, and I'm talking, I'm 23. I give 21 to 22 a slight pass. But 23 plus, you have to switch up your mindset. You really have to be in like a stable mind. I'm not saying that right. You have to be mature with your money. You can't just be spending it frivolously. You have to know how to invest. And I'm not just talking about stocks and stuff, but you have to know where to invest your money in and how much of it to invest at that time. You have to know how to pay a bill. You have to know, you know what I'm saying, all this type of stuff that have to deal with finances, credit scores, all this type of stuff, just to be an adult. So you have to, you can't be childlike when it comes to money. When I say that, I mean like, oh, especially if you don't have it. Now, I've never had it like that, for real, for real, like where it's just nothing for me to do to buy anything, you know, not yet. Because it's coming, it's on the way. But I feel like that is important. That's an important trait to have in a partner when it comes to dating now is um, somebody who is a good steward with their money. And I also feel like it's important. You know, that's just with anybody. But I was talking about the narrative of um the city girl and i think like we're so hyper independent because we've had to be for so long that that trauma has like manifested this you know and whoever's fault that is whatever that can be whatever conversation you want that to be. But the um, reality now is that the black woman, the the popularized black woman, or the modern whatever. Oh, my God. Ew. I hate saying it. But um, it's that they don't need men. And it's like to have a man, it's like having a dog. So, if, you know, if that makes sense. I don't like that. I don't want to pay for everything. Not saying that's the only thing that matter, but, uh, no. I don't want to pay for everything by myself. Like, I would love to have two, you know? I would love to have somebody who actually loves me. Fuck all the money, you know? Like, for real, for real. And that, too. That, you see how that was the first thing I went to because that's what, has been um pushed within that narrative is how important money is in a relationship and statistically that's the failure of most marriages quote unquote but I think that's not saying that's a lie but communication can you communicate are you trying to better yourself daily like, just because we got together and we got married and we got kids, life didn't stop. You know what I'm saying? Like, are you still trying to, you know, keep the spark up? Are You know, are you still working towards your own dreams? For real. Like, it's not just about money. I think when money comes to play, then I think that's like the that's like the cherry on top. Like it's other stuff on that Sunday. <laughs> you know, there's a bowl, there's a motherfucking the scoops, and they got different flavors in this bitch. They got in the banana, you know, and don't drizzle syrup in that bitch. For real. Then you really got an issue. But that cherry on top is definitely the money. So at least that's what they say. But I think that is getting washed out now. And I love it because we got other stuff to talk about. 
We got to bring the motherfucking community together, nigga. For real. <laughs> we got to bring this shit together. We need everybody, but in the black community specifically. We need our men and women to need to unite. We need everybody. Because these kids are suffering. Everybody's suffering. But these kids are suffering, I feel, the most because they don't understand really what's going on for real. Um, They're trying to understand and still understand themselves. It's just a lot of um, growth. That was, I don't know, but somebody got to save the kids, bro. Because I'd be damned. I'm not having my children go to public school just to for them to have clear book bags and wear life, like not life vests, motherfucking bulletproof vest and book bags and shit to go to school. But then I want them to have a social life, but they got to be educated. So then they got to be on the tablet, on the computer and shit. Like, no, bro. Life is fucked up. This world is fucked up. This world is fucked up and somebody got to do something. <laughs> Insert the motherfucking sound clip. Somebody, somebody got to do something. Somebody did this. I really love that podcast, for real. So, yeah. I'm glad I came on here and talked to you guys for real, for real. I've been procrastinating my ass off. And you wouldn't you wouldn't even believe it. I just got shit sitting. Just sit, 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 sit. But I am the way I am moving going forward is like chess. It's very planned and not as spontaneous like it's still gonna be spontaneous stuff you know what I'm saying because that's kind of my personality but as far as like content and stuff like that moving forward I'm trying and I will and I am going to be the best in my field I was listening to a motivational video earlier, and the guy was like, um, what was his name? Oh, I can't remember. But he was saying, um, just master one field. Get people to talk about you in one field. Not everywhere. You know, try to do too much. Just do one thing right now. And then you branch out. So we're going to end with this music. I haven't been to the studio in like maybe like two weeks, two, three weeks. Has it been three weeks going on? Yeah, but it's June. I do plan on finishing it this month because I need to do promo and things like that. That's right. I made a tweet about that Juneteenth pro black um, take I just did. And a guy quoted it and said, they don't care about us. They just want our money. Shout out to at fat Haitian, fat underscore Haitian. And yeah, he's right. That's why I said, man, like what is happening? That's why I'm here today doing my part to um get this revolution going, bro. Because... My kids can't live like this. My kids' kids can't live like this. I can't live like this. But somebody got to do the work first because they don't know what to do. And I don't want to, you know, have them in a position to go and look about it, you know, without having the proper tools at least. Ooh, Coyle Ray got her braces off. Go Koi, go Koi. I know that feeling, boo. 
I know that. With that retainer. With that retainer, girl. Okay. Hope she got it permanent because I feel like that's probably part of my downfall is that my retainer wasn't permanent. I had the option of taking it in and out. And for that reason, short story time, and then we're going to get out of here. For that reason, my first year in college, eating at the dining hall, gaining my freshman 15, freshman 30, you know what I'm saying? Um, I took my retainer off one day, put it in a napkin, basically threw it in the trash. Didn't realize it was in the trash until, you know, they had already put all the bags in the dumpster. Girl, I had class too. But guess what I did? Went in the dumpster to go get my fucking retainer because my daddy paid too got he paid too much money and he already said it. I didn't let him know I had lost it or whatever, but I just was thinking of the idea of telling him, Daddy, I lost my retainer. And he just I'm talking about I had just gotten my braces off that year. So no. I was <laughs> I went in that trash and I found my fucking retainers. It took about an hour and some change. And somebody came and helped me. Shout out to that guy. I think another guy tried to help me too that worked there. But somebody, two people tried to come and help me, you know. And they was black men that came and helped me get my shit out the motherfucking garbage. And that's how I know that's love. That's how I know that's love. I've had, so, okay, Kyle's not the only person that's done that for me. Shout out to Kyle. I love Kyle. But, um. Yeah. Okay, so it's been three guys. That's cute. Okay, okay. That's love, though. When you know somebody is willing to go inside of a dumpster to get something for you, that's love. Because that's nasty as fuck. But it's got to get found. You know what I'm saying? And it's in there. So somebody got to go get it. And they do. Or help. You know what I'm saying? So I love black men. Shout out to y'all. Um, a guy asked me on Twitter, would I, would I date white guys the other day? And I said, no, would I marry a white guy? I said, no, I'd date a white guy. Like if Jack Harlow wanted to take me out to dinner, I'm going to say, yeah, if he presents it correctly, you know, I'm not going to say no to that, but to be in a relationship and to marry and to procreate is a negative. But you can go ahead and we can have a good time. Um, Yeah, so it's been real. Let me get the song together so we can get up out of here. I hope that y'all have a great weekend, a great week. I don't know. I'm trying to find a day that works for me to pod. I'm usually not off on Fridays, y'all. I usually work Fridays. But the kids are asleep. So I just was like perfect opportunity it's been real y'all make sure you follow me on all social medias at taylor Wayla. follow me um on or subscribe to me on youtube at taylor Wayla. um listen to my music everywhere taylor Wayla mixtape Wayla coming soon Wayla, it's just come on man get used to the name i keep saying it because you got to keep hearing it anyways so wow all right this is Carenta de Inocente, Inocente, featuring Mike Towers. Si te digo que te amo, que tu amor me tiene enfermo, te aprovechí con más ganas, me das lo que quiero. Aunque te vendas como ángel, oficial tiene esos trucos, y es por eso que hace tiempo yo no duermo solo. Que te amo, 